Hello, everybody, and welcome to Live with Laura. We are going to go ahead and get started. I know that there's a few more people that are jumping on. I see them connecting, but we have a lot to cover today. So we are going to go through everything commercial lines. Well, maybe not everything, but a lot of things commercial lines today. All right. So if you have any questions, be sure to raise your hand chat it in so we can review. If I go too fast, let me know, and uh, we can slow down when we jump into Epic. And I have Anissa and Catherine on with me today. Angel will be jumping on here shortly. They're going to be monitoring the chat. Oh, there's Angel right now. So great. So I got three of them. So the dream team's all here for you guys so we can uh, get through all of the chats and questions that you guys may have. All right, so what we're going to be doing today is going through market submissions. I don't know if anybody is using market submissions in Epic, but we are gonna go through that today. Certificates of insurance. We're gonna go through entering a package policy into Epic. We're gonna go over the new commercial lines quoting that Epic has to offer and show you the YouTube um, path and courses that we have all for commercial lines. So we got a full day for you guys today. If you guys don't know anything about all of us, um, here we are, it's the four of us. We call ourselves the dream team and um, we like to assist you guys with your onboarding and all of your ongoing trainings. So just wanted to go through real quick. If you haven't already registered for our conference, please do so as soon as you can, because I heard that um, some of those early discounts for the hotels, those are filling up really fast. Also, our education roundup goes out. Here's where we're going to tell you guys everything that's coming up for the month. I'm not sure if you guys seen that, but Hiscox is changing their policy numbers at renewal. So what that means is when you go in and you manually renew that policy, you're going to have to change that policy number. So if you need any help with that, just jump on a weekly session, servicing session with Anissa and she can help you. Or we can um, show you where that's at in the personal lines on renewing policies in Epic in our YouTube channel. Also upcoming is our marketing workshop. So that's going to be June 21st to the 23rd. It's about an hour long and it's with Agency Revolution. And if you guys have not heard Joel from Agency Revolution um, speak, he is amazing and he has so much fun and he's got so many great tips for you on how to utilize social media, modernizing your um, websites and what to do and not to do with email marketing. So this is going to be a great workshop. So look for emails that are going to be coming out in our is Noah Advantage newsletter and also the education roundup. All right, let's jump in. I'm going to shut my camera down because when I'm sharing my screen and going into Epic and it kind of slows down, bogs down a little. So Remember to go ahead and chat in any of your questions that you may have, and we will get started. All right, let me pull up my accounts. All right, can you guys see my screen for Redbud Gardens? Yes, we can. All right, thank you, Anissa. All right, commercial line. So this is our commercial clients. And you know, when you are entering in an account, one thing I just wanted to quickly show you is for your commercial accounts, add them in as a business. There is a difference between your individual and your business accounts when you're adding them into Epic. You're going to be able to put in your FEIN numbers. You're going to be able to put in your NAIC numbers. You're going to be able to put in all of that information into a business account. When you go to add in policies, you're going to put in there, it's going to default for your commercial lines policy when you're putting in those policies. So remember, use this. It's going to be very helpful for tracking purposes as well. All right, let me get out of this. 
All right, let's go into policies. And from here, if you're gonna be adding in a marketing submission, you're gonna to go to policies and you're gonna see current renewed and you're gonna do the drop down. Click on this drop down, and this is where you're gonna to go to marketed. So if you click on marketed, here's where you are going to create a new market submission. I already have one in here. So it does take a little bit of time. So it would take way too much time than what I wanna get through if I went through a brand new one. So I'm gonna edit this one and I'm gonna show you what you need to do and put in. So for the name, we always wanna put in the term. And that's the same when you're attaching any documents into Epic, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you put that term in there. So the 2022 to 2023 market submission, put your dates in there. You can also track it with the source. And here's where you're going to add in the different lines of business. So remember, we always use the GL-S for general liability and for workers comp to use the WCOC. Now, if you're going to be using any of work comp through the state poll, that's where you're going to be using the WCAR. So it is a little different for the work comp, but I'm gonna use this one, the WCOC. When you add them in, put the status as a quote because you don't want it to be new business. It's not new business yet, it's, it's a quote. You can also add in who is servicing this market submission. And when you change this over into issued policies, all of that information is going to already be added in. You can add your profit center. So you have all of that already entered in your market submission when you're going to be transferring it into policies. And then you can apply it to all of your lines. So let's go in and take a look at this commercial AP. So this is your commercial AP. And anytime you add a policy into Epic, it is your Accord forms. So this is the 125. And you're going to be adding in all of the necessary information that you're going to need for when you're quoting this market submission. You're going to put in the FEIN number. If you have the NAIC numbers, you are going to put those in. The more information that you put into your commercial application, the more information that it transfers into your general liability, your business auto, and your work comp, your umbrella. And it's all the information the underwriters are going to need when you're submitting this to them for them to quote. So I'm just going to quickly go down. You're going to put your premises in. So you have one, and then let's say there's another one. So we have the first one, and we're going to enter in all the information regarding this building. If you don't have this information, this is information you should be asking your client for. And also for building two. So we have, you know, building one is going to be the main office. Building two is the machine shop. So we're going to make sure that we have this information in there. And if you're not using quote sheets, we have quote sheets available that we can supply to you for commercial lines and for personal lines. All right, so then you're just gonna keep going down, keep going down, answering all of your questions. But if you look over here to the far right, you can default those all to no, as long as they are no. What I tend to do is default it to no, and then go through and change the ones that I need to for yes. Prior carrier information is really important because those underwriters are gonna to wanna to know that information. And then you can enter that all in right here. Any attachments that you need to, you can click on here, get those attachments that you're gonna be adding into this market submission that you're gonna be sending to your client, to your underwriter. So now if I go into the property, it opens up my Accord 140 and it pulled in the premises information from my commercial AP. So that saved me time and I didn't have to add that in. And then if we just keep going down, we're gonna see all of the information that's gonna to need to be put in. Um, 
Let's see, Bonnie said, this is so cool and it's already an epic. Yes, it is so cool. And it is right here for you to use to fill out your accord forms. You're not going to the internet, pulling up accord forms and filling them out. They're all right here, gonna keep track of it for you. All right, so then let's go to our general liability and you're gonna put in all your coverages for you. Right here, put everything in. Put in your forms and endorsements if you need to put any in here. Oh, and my coverage is, I went right by that. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure too, you're gonna to be adding in all of your different class codes under your general liability. So when you go in and you add them, you can search and go by your locations and you can search for the class codes. So all you have to do is you can do it by description and, We'll put in this was the landscape and it's going to pull up those codes for me. I don't even have to go in and search the internet for them. It's all right here in Epic for you. Does anybody have any questions so far on entering in the information for your market submission? Hey, Laura, yeah, we had a few questions come in in the chat. Sure. So first, um, is there a section in the property to list the business income as actual loss sustained rather than a number? Where was I? Uh, who, in, who asked that? John. John, where did you? Where was I at when you were seeing me wanting to know where to add that in? Under, Under the, the property, property section. section. Okay. And was there a number in here under the property section right here, John? Is this what you're referring to? So instead of putting a number limit, you want to put in dollar amount limits. Let me find that out. Let me look on, let me look into that. And then we'll, we can get back to you on that. Sorry that I didn't have that answer. All right. Was there another question too? Yes. What about unusual forms like umbrella or access? Are those forms here? They are. So when you are going in and you're creating your market submission, you can go in and add in those different lines of business. So right now I just have these in here but I can go ahead and let me edit this and I can add in other lines of business. Oh, it's not going to let me because I already started it, but yes, you can add in the different lines of business. Absolutely. And you can also create them completely separate if you wanted to. So if you wanted to go in and just do a commercial auto and then do separate just for the BOP or for your general liability, mainly a BOP. I probably shouldn't have used that terminology because you're going to go to your standard carriers for that and you wouldn't need to do the market submission for that. All right, so there is business income right there. I don't know why I am. We got business income without expenses, payroll. All right, well, you could, Jim, use a uh, market submission for a BOP, but if you're going into, let's say, Pekin, and you're gonna go, or Travelers, Hartford, you're gonna go in there, you're gonna go in and you're going to quote that BOP right there on their website. You wouldn't need to send in this market submission for the Accord apps for that. All right, any other questions regarding the market submission? Do, do I need to go through it again? Does everybody understand that you can go in and you can add in as many different accord forms as you would like? So let me get back out of it because somebody just asked where I went and got in there. So I'm gonna go into policies and I can create my market submission. I'm gonna put in my dates, All right? 
put in the dates. We'll just use today's date for easy numbers. My department is going to be commercial lines and my type of business. So it's commercial lines. And here's where I'm going to add in a new lines of business. Or if you are remarketing and you already have policies that are in your policy screen that you are remarketing to new carriers, you can go in and add an existing line. So this is my demo client. I don't have one that has all of the downloaded information. So you can also use this for remarketing as well. So if I add the new lines, here's where I can go through and add all of my different lines of business. Was that helpful? Who asked where to find that and what lines to add? Okay, was there any other questions, Anissa? No, I think we're caught up right now. Thanks, Laura. All right, so Casey asked, if you select the class code, will it auto kick out carriers that don't like the risk? It will not do that. But you can use the market, market appetite up here. And this is going to show you what carriers are going to write what lines of business. And I'm in Illinois. And if I click search, it's going to show me, oh, look, Travelers is going to write their auto, their BOP, the GL, the property umbrella, and we're comp. It's gonna write all of this for me. And I have it set that I'm appointed with travelers. So this is gonna come up first for me. And if I keep scrolling down, look at Nationwide doesn't want the BOP. They're gonna take the other lines of business, but they're not gonna take the BOP. Liberty Mutual, Pekin doesn't want the BOP. So if you keep scrolling down, you're gonna see the different uh, carriers and what lines of business. From here, it can take you right into their agent portal, but you can also click here on different notes to see different appetites that they have. So the market appetite is something that is available to you already in Epic that you can use. And if I go back over to my current and my renewed policies, another thing that I can take a look at is over to the right, I do have the market appetite right here. So because I'm using my client, uh, my demo client, it's not gonna show them, maybe it will over here. No. So right over here for policies is where you will see this drop down and it will show you all the different carriers. Here it comes up. So like we just seen in the market appetite that I clicked on up here, it's gonna show it right here on the side. So right now I know that I can go right into Travelers and remarket this if need be. All right, so that's the market appetites. Any other questions in regards to market submissions for these carriers? Someone had asked if you can do this, um, if there's no renewal. If there's no renewal? Yes. All right, let's go in and let's click the plus sign. So it's looking for my policies that I currently have available to market and add into this market submission. So if you're remarketing that, it's really a new piece of business that's going to be going out to the different carriers. So if you do have this in, and I can go ahead and click on all of them, and it's gonna pull in my different lines that I have. And then when I click detail, it's gonna open that up. And Eric, yes, this is specifically helpful when you are marketing wholesale. When you're going out and you have to get your accord forms together and send to their underwriting team for them to quote it for you, this is going to be extremely helpful for you. All right, so let me go in here and show you guys. It opens it right up. So if I had all the accord forms filled up out, or if they downloaded from the carrier, 
all of that information is going to be filled out for me. So it would be in there if I had all this information originally in that new business policy that I that I entered in. Oh, Bonnie said she's been doing this the hard way for two years. This is a great way to save you some time. And then they're automatically going to be in here for you to go ahead and utilize them for the next term. So you'll have all of these documents already in here. So then when you come up here to actions, here's where you're going to create the carrier submission. So now I'm going to, where am I gonna send this to? I'm gonna send this over to RT Specialty. I can even put in the requested total premium that I'm looking for. It's in progress. And then I can add this. And I want to, I have to add in all my information. Then I have to create the carrier submission. Let me get rid of this. Okay. So now it pulls it down into this carrier submission part. So we can see it right here. And this is what I already had processed earlier. So you guys could see that. Then when I go up to action, I want to review these applications. I need to review these prior to sending them to any of the carriers. Now, a lot of our agents, what they do is go to hit distribution, and then I'm going to change this to prints. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to preview it first. Some of our agents take these applications and then they just save them onto their computer and then they email them that way. But you can email them directly from Epic. All right, so here's 20 pages of all these accord forms that we just filled out. So I have all of this information, all these documents right here. And if you want, you can go ahead and we have contact, we can email this over and it is a test to CL and send it. In Epic, we can put in our signatures. <laughs> Bonnie says, holy crap. Um, you, in Epic, when you're emailing out of Epic, you can put in your signature right here. So when you're sending it out to that carrier, the underwriter, you have all of your information. A lot of our emails will give a brief, or a lot of our agents will give a brief description regarding this account while they're sending that. So in that email, it may say, uh, Red Bun Gardens, you know, they've been in business for 25 years, you know, it may give a little description about them so the underwriter can have all of that together for them. All right, so I'm gonna cancel this so we don't send that off to Daniel. And then after we create this market submission, then we can move this from, from the, carry, uh, the market submission area and we can move it over. It's not gonna let me because this is my demo client, but we can move it over to current policies. So when it gets moved over to policies, it'll all be here. You'll have a screen that's gonna pop up that's gonna say to you, what is the, who's the carrier? What's the premium? What's the profit center? You can put all of that information in just like when you are clicking the plus sign to add a policy, but all of that information is gonna be there for you. All right, any questions? I can't keep up with the chat, Anissa, I'm sorry. Yes, one came in. How do we add underwriters to Epic to send applications to so we don't need to type every time? Well, that's one thing we are working with Applied Systems on is to be able to get in all of these contacts for the underwriters. So currently you would just have to type in their email address. And that's why a lot of our agents go in, review the application, and their underwriters are already in their Outlook. So it's just, it just populates. So according to Applied Systems, coming in the next year, when you start typing to send an email, it should pull from your Outlook those, those contacts that you have. So if Jane Smith at 
travelers or Jane Smith at RT Specialties, it when you started typing, you know, Jane dot Smith, it would populate that in. But right now, it does not. You would have to know their email address or save that that whole document for your um, apps and then attach it into your Outlook and send it. All right. Oh, you yeah, right, John. I have to create the carrier response. He is so smart that John, he should be coming over here. So let me go back into here because John just reminded me that we have to create the carrier responses in order to, and it's, see, it's not going to let me. So we have to create the carrier responses and then we can move it over. Perfect. All right. It's not going to let me do that either because it's my demo client to, to go through and submit it. I'm glad, John. I'm sorry, John, that you had that trouble a lot too. But who's going to use the market submission? I already know Bonnie's going to. I hope that the market submission, you will find it will save you time when you are sending these to your wholesale markets. And I believe um, whoever was on the wholesale workshop a couple of weeks ago, when you're sending those over to NBS, now here's a perfect way to get those together, those apps and send them over. All right. <laughs> Any, any other questions? Are we good, Anissa? Yes, we're good right now. Okay. So we are here, and I have to look at my notes because I don't want to miss anything. All right, certificates of insurance. So now we're going over to certificates of insurance. Everybody needs to know how to do a certificate of insurance. When you go in and you add your certificate of insurance, you need to title it. And what did I say before? We're going to put in there our term. Always want to put in our term and we're going to use it as a master and then we're going to open it up. So when we're going through, same way, anytime you're working in Epic, you got to follow all the way down. We're going to go to general liability and everyone gets to this point and they say, what just happened? Nothing pulled in. Well, we always have to go in and click this plus sign and we're going to look for the line of business. All right, we're gonna put in this policy here, this general liability, don't look at my dates, and I'm gonna call it a GL-S. See this little box here? We're gonna check this default template box. Definitely wanna do that. If you added this policy and you added in your limits, it's gonna pull those limits in. If it doesn't pull in any limits, you're gonna to need to add in all of the limits for that policy that you just wrote, okay? We're gonna add the policy by clicking plus. We're gonna check the default template. Hopefully it pulls in all the coverages for you because you entered them in when you added the policy. If not, add those in. And then you're gonna to go to auto and you're gonna do the same thing. And you're gonna pick your auto policy default, and then you can put in what you need to put in. So I'm gonna do combined single limits. And then we're just gonna keep going down the list. All right, so descriptions of operations. Sometimes when you're doing a certificate of insurance, you need to put in special different language. Maybe you have to put in what the location is. You're going and sending the certificate to a management company. They wanna know what location that your client's doing work at. So you can put the location in here. Maybe you have to add an attachment on here. Maybe you're adding a bond to it. You can add it right here. So your holders, holders are really important. I can click the plus sign and I can add in all of my holders. So let's just put in Chase. And if I look over to the right, my templates for this holder, it pulled in the GL-S and the auto. That's because I checked that box default template. If you forget to check that box and these are blank, just use the dropdown and add them in. 
And from here, you can add in the phone number, fax number, how you're going to send this to them. Maybe you want it, just this holder just wants a certain language written on it. And you can add that in here. Any of the documents, holder details, maybe you need to add them as general liability. And then their address pulls in. That's the holders, that's another way. Or up at this step, right, I can copy holders from another certificate. So if I click on that, it's gonna to wanna to know what certificate do I wanna copy it from? So you just use the drop down and you just pull it right through. All right, so then we're gonna go up to actions and we're gonna issue this certificate. All right, is there any questions? All right, so now your contact name, I'm gonna put in my name and it's pulling my contact name from that servicing from that policy. And I'm gonna go over to the holder distribution. I have both of them checked and I'm going to change this one to print so I can preview it. Always, always, always preview before you send anything out. So I could have also put in the producer and my scan signature. Or regarding signature, whose signature is typically listed on the certificate? The producer. So a, a licensed producer who wrote the piece of business. So if you're a CSR and you're not licensed, and you're doing a certificate of insurance for one of your producers or your agency owner, you would use their name on the certificate. All right, so let me get out of this and you can have all your signatures right here. All right, any questions on this? We had a couple more come in. So the first one is, is there any way to make the COI default to print a PDF each time? So when I was on my holder details, I had that one set to print. So if I add in another one and I set it, set, um, put it to print, it will be already set to print when I go and I issue my certificate other than a way on the back end to set that up as a default? No, but you, when you're adding it in, you can set it up right here. I hope that helped. Was that John? It was, and there's also a second question. Is there any way to make the system default to check mark the most recent COI that was processed? Is, you mean up here? Right here, John, you want to see what the most recent one is? You can see when the last one was updated. This will show you the last one. Use your dates in here. And now I want to go ahead and I'm going to renew this certificate. What? I don't have to start a new one? No. All you have to do is go in here and renew it. Remember to change your dates. So change your dates. And you can go ahead and click on all of those. And I'm gonna click detail and it's gonna renew my certificate for me. So then when I come in here, it's gonna pull in my renewals for me. Go ahead and pick it and you're all good. You can go ahead and issue that. Always make sure, I always want you to know, go back through, make sure you have the correct dates and the policies for that line of business. And then just check your holders and you're all set. Did that answer John's question? It was added if 
they, if John created a new cert holder and you click issue cert, it would, it check marks all the cert holders instead of the new one that was created. So if I'm right here and I go to action and I issue it, can you unmute John for me, please? Because it looks like Bonnie might be having the same issue too. All right, John should be able to unmute himself. Hey, John. Hey, Laura, sorry I'm annoying. You are not annoying. You're <laughs> helpful for everybody else too. It's only like, it's almost like the one like you see on your holders, it says village and there's like four of them. So it's only because every time we issue new certs, it'll, if you have a lot that look like that, it's, um, it gets confusing on which one we're issuing because some of them are always like city of San Diego and there'll be like 20 of them because they do different projects. So usually if you add a new one, it check marks um, all of the holders instead of just the one that we most recently did. So it's hard to know, like if you see the holders, some of them are San Diego city and there'll be like 10 of them or city of Chicago, there's 10 of them, but it's not, it's not easy to know which one we just did that day. So you're doing them all separately? Yeah, like for example, someone do a project for city of San Diego last month and then this month they do another one or they do one per day and it doesn't show like, cause each one will have a different project number referenced on it. And it, so it's kind of hard to see which one is the one that we need to issue that we did the same day. I don't know why it always check marks all of them. Can you, you can select all or deselect all. Can mm -hmm. you put in the description so you know description of operations, that project number so you know which one it is? Yeah, I guess we'll have to do that. I just wanted to see if there was an easier way. That's what I've been doing for now, but I was hoping, um, I love apply, but with um, AMS, like whenever you issued a new certificate, it would, be, it would only click the one that you just did that same moment to issue and print. Okay. But it if sounds you, like it doesn't do the same thing on this one. Would any of these distribution order work? Um, what if you do custom sort? Actually, I never even seen this button before. And then if you did first is like date issued. Uh, no, uh, I was hoping. Named insured. Nope, it's all the same. Yeah. Sorry about that. That's okay. I wish there was like a way that it would just issue like the newest ones on top. Well, let, let us look into that too. Okay. We will look into that as well. I have one client that is probably going to have about 500 starts this year. So that's why I'm trying to find a way to like kind of minimize the number of cert holders and to scroll through them all. Yeah. Yeah. That 500 is a lot to be going through all of them for that is yeah. for sure. All right. Let us look into that one as well. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Any other questions before we move on? I think we're good. All right, what do we wanna do next, Anissa? You wanna show them how to enter in a package policy? Yeah. All right, you, you tell me and I'll, and I'll do it. All right, let me request remote control. That might be a little easier. Oh, well, all right, you're no fun. <laughs> so if anyone is familiar with adding a personal lines package policy, adding a commercial lines package policy is pretty much the same way. The only difference is the lines of business that you use. And especially when starting off, we're going to click the plus sign. You want to make sure you select the correct commercial package line type. So click the drop down next to type. I know it at the top of my head. So it is CP. Just kidding, I forgot it, CPKG, so that's commercial package. All right, and if there's any um, important details to this package, you can add that in the description here, but we can leave it for uh, as commercial package right now. Add your policy number as usual, add the term dates of that policy. 
And always, you know, make sure that everything is listed in your fields, your agency branch and department, make sure that it is listed as commercial. So that does present on your reports. All right, line of business that's pre-filled in once you select the commercial package, line type, profit center, add that accordingly. And then the issuing company for your package, we can do, let's use the Hartford. Okay, if I were to check the commission agreement box, you might see that the percentage is zero and that occurs when you use this line type. So if you do see zero percent, do not be alarmed. Okay, then you will add the full premium. And then from here, you're going to click detail because we are not done yet. We need to add each individual line that's included in our commercial package here. So click detail. We will receive our activity stating that we need to follow up on our download. So we'll keep that open. Okay, so then we're taken to this line tab. Right here, we'll see the line of business. We see the commercial package. Now I want to add the general liability line. So click the plus sign here. Add my line type. Check our commission agreement box. I will add the premium of this line type. Okay, now I need to add the additional line. So click add, and we're gonna add the BOP. The BOP is included in this package. Add our BOP line, check our commission agreement box, add the premium for that line type. All right, so that's all there is to it in my commercial package. If you had three or four line types, please continue to click add until you were done. But since we are done here, I'll click finish. Okay, so now under our lines of business section, we see three lines. So we actually need to delete the CPKG line once we are done. So highlight that line of business and select delete. And I will show you why, oh, I'll have to close out that activity. Let me head over there real quick. I will go back to policies. Okay, then we should be able to delete this line type. Okay, and now we are just left with these two lines. This is what's included in our package. This is all that we need to see. So once I close out on the left, it's going to save our changes. I can leave it in process because we're waiting for that download, ideally. Okay, we had a few packages here. Okay, so here's the entry that I just did. We can see the line that is bolded is CPKG for commercial package. And then the other lines that are not bolded, we can see what that package consists of, which is our BOP and general liability policy. So in addition to this, I do have a tutorial on how to add package policies that is listed on our education YouTube channel. So you guys have access to that if you need to review that again. Awesome. One thing I wanted to note too, when you are adding in this policy and it's a wholesale policy and it's a policy that we are not collecting the commission on and we may not know what the commission is, you will have to add in your own commission here. So you'll have to add that in and then go through the same processes that Anissa just told you. I'm going right through them all. Thanks, Anissa. Any questions? Let's see. John says, when we add an endorsement to a policy, where do we add the premium bearing amount for that specific endorsement? So John, when you are adding in an endorsement for a policy that downloads, 
you're going to see that it's going to be on uh, service summary row two. But if it's a policy that doesn't download either, the one thing that we do and what Allegiance Insurance does in our home office is they go in and they endorse revise this existing line. So you're going to click on, I have to issue it because it can't endorse something that's not issued. So if the policy doesn't download, make sure you check your policy number with your carrier, you make sure your dates are correct, and you issue this policy. If you don't issue a policy, then it's going to show up on your policies that haven't downloaded report. So we're going to go to actions and we're going to endorse revise this existing line. Which one are we, you know, pick the line of business we want to do. We'll just use today's date and the description, whatever it may be, we're adding coverage. You can put in any description that you want. When you open this up, follow up on that download. If the download's not going to come through, then you're going to want to make sure that you manually issue this. You can come in here and add in any of the coverages or anything that you needed to add in for that policy, whatever it may be. Now, when you go back up to your servicing and billing, you're going to change your estimated. So maybe that changed it to you know, 150. And if your policy doesn't download, you're going to want to make sure you add in your annualized premium as well. And I'll show you over here on where to do that. So we're going to add in our annualized premium. And this one was $50. Sorry, Anissa did not see what you did. So this one's still 50. And here's the one that we added additional premium to. So we're going to add in the, the build annualized and we're going to add in the estimated. So here's where we are going to update the new premium for this policy. The download will come through. It's going to change it from in process to issued, change by download. If it doesn't, then you can go ahead and issue that. All right, any questions on the endorsement? Okay, I am going to move on to, well, that's taking a long time. All right, I'm gonna move on to quotes. So I was watching the registration for today and I added to your login to Epic quotes. You should see it. If you don't see it, chat in and let us know that you don't see the quotes added in here. And now we're going to quote commercial lines. We don't have personal lines available at this time. You know, John, log out. John, you should see that because you should have seen it automatically. Um, log out and log back in. John, if you want to see it, or you can just follow along right here. And then we'll double check to make sure that you have that added on. So right in here for your commercial accounts, you're going to see quotes. And you're going to see commercial lines. Now, there are only four carriers right now to quote for Epic Quotes for commercial lines. It is free for right now for a trial period until applied gets more carriers on it, then they're gonna start charging for it. But they want everybody to get in there, play around in the commercial lines quotes and start quoting away. So guard, they do guard for work comp, Liberty Mutual, a bop in work comp, state auto work comp and travelers bop in work comp. So you can go ahead and quote those. Kathy did this the other day. It took her less than five minutes. So I'm going to click the plus sign and I'm going to go in and select my line of business, my dates, policy source if need, and your department. 
guess what department? Commercial lines. Make sure that you are choosing commercial lines for your commercial lines accounts. And we're going to start the quote. And hopefully we're going to get some information back. So now we're going to go through everything. We can do our classifications. We're just going to do our first one that's up here. And we're going to answer any questions that they need. Address anything that needs to be updated. It is pulling from what we do have in Epic. So look, it's given me some information that a Liberty Mutual has different options for this question. All right, so you I'm gonna have to put that in there. So when did this start? They started, let's say in 2000. And then we described the business, whatever it was, law firm, loss history. Do we have any prior losses to report? I'm gonna say no and keep going on. So the find this quote button, if you look over to the left on my screen, you should see where it says quotes. Is nobody seeing where it says quotes? You don't have it. Okay, don't worry. I'm gonna make sure that you guys have it by the end of the day. And I will let you know, I'll send y'all an email letting you know to log off and log back in because we practiced with it last night and we did have some people that had the visibility. So we'll take a look at that. So just go through all of the information so you can go in and get a quote back, all right? And it's just gonna go through all of it. Now remember, it is limited to just Guard, Liberty Mutual, State Auto and Travelers, but they are always looking to add more carriers to, to this lineup. So it is really cool once you get through and once I can show it to you when you all have it. All right, so then let's go back. All right, so right now you're gonna see the selected markets for that line of business that I did select. I think I put, it was a law firm. So you'll see right here, they'll do that, Bob. All right, any questions on this? Any questions? All right. Scott doesn't have it either. All right, we'll make sure that you guys have that visibility and I'll take a look to figure out why you do not. All right, I think we are really good with quotes. And let me ask you a question. If I were to get somebody from Applied Systems to come and do a complete demo of the Epic Quotes, would anybody be interested in attending a full demo of it? All right, that's four, five, six. All right, that sounds like a good number. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk with Applied Systems about the visibility of why you guys can't see it and to um, get a demo for them to go through all of it for us. Cause I think that's gonna be really helpful for everybody to see it go through and not just on my test client. You know, they have the capabilities, their test clients to get full quotes back. So it's pretty cool. So I will, I will, um, I'll get that together as well. Another thing I wanted to show you real quick that you have available to you is Ask Kodiak. Not sure if anybody has used this, but um, Applied Systems owns Ivans, and Ivans is the one who does all of our downloads and works with our carriers. And Ivans is also the one that does our market appetite, and now they own Ask Kodiak. So Ask Kodiak is free, and all you need to do is come over here and sign up and go through it all. And you can see different wholesale. Let me click on this. And it's going to show you more of the managing the market appetites a lot more than what's just in the um, market appetite. 
and you click on carriers, it's going to go through all of it. It's going to give you all kinds of real time information. So if you guys have time, take a look at Ask Kodiak. And by the time we set up that demo with applied systems, then um, have Ask Kodiak, have your sign up on that too. So we can have them go through Ask Kodiak and the uh, Epic Commercial Lines Radar. All right, any other questions that you may have? We have a few more minutes left. Perfect. All right, one last thing we want to show you guys. And I'm going to go right in here. Catherine, are you still with me? I am. All right. So I went to asnoah.com. And this is where you always are going to hear us say, go to asnoah.com, go to our website, go to the um, Asnoah University. So go to Asnoah University. And here is where you're going to schedule for any of our weekly trainings. And also, what is it, Catherine? Our YouTube channel right there. It says video library. You can access it here. Or if you just go to YouTube and type in as Noah training, it'll take you here as well. Um, but specifically today, I mean, we have all these videos on here. If you scroll down, Laura, you guys can see kind of everything that we have available. But specifically for today, we were going to look at the commercial lines playlist. So if you can click on playlists at the top and scroll down, you see it's second from the end and it's servicing commercial lines. So if you click on that and then just pause it. The Hansons are here. <laughs> on the right, it'll tell you exactly which videos are in this playlist. So you can watch the whole thing if you want to just get an idea of what we offer, or you can just kind of look through and click on ones that you want to watch. But there's a uh, video on how to do that certificate of insurance in Epic that Laura just went over. So if you want a refresher after today, you can access that right there. Yeah, and that marketing submission that we just went over as well. Right. So that's there. That's perfect. Ooh. I know we love our YouTube channel and we love that everybody is using it. You know, if you can look, we got since, you know, for two years, we got 692 views on this, um, on, on this video. So we're really excited and we're glad that you guys are utilizing the videos and going to the videos first to get help with that. So we appreciate that. So that's our YouTube channel. And you can scroll down and register for any of our other weekly sessions that we have to offer. All right, Stephanie loves them. She loves our videos. So we, we like to hear that. All right, so go ahead and utilize that. And I think that is, that is all that I have on that. So our resource page, you can still see my screen, correct? Yes. Yes. All right, great. So we have our resources and we're really excited to have the education roundup that's going to be going out to you guys um, once a month, giving you all of our updates and utilizing our um, as Noah private Facebook group. We know a lot of you do go in and ask your questions on, hey, I have a client that's in Ohio and I'm not licensed in Ohio. I'm in Texas. Does any, can anybody write this? And it's great to see everybody going and jumping on and helping and especially new people who are asking, where do I write this? Hey, I have this account. Where can I write it? And it's a great place to network within our group of ESNOA affiliates. So we're really excited that you guys are utilizing that. And thanks for jumping on. Um, we went through that marketing submission, the certificates of insurance, entering those commercial lines, package policies. Thank you, Anissa, for showing that. We went through the Epic CL Raider and Catherine showed us where to go in for the YouTube channel. So I really appreciate that you guys are jumping on with me um, once a month to go through all of our sessions. Um, fill out the evaluation at the end. Let me know what you wanna see in upcoming um, Live with Laura's. We do this once a month. Next month is going to be uh, June 14th at 2 p.m. And it's going to be about marketing and where can you go to the carrier websites and where can you find, where can you find helpful marketing tools? You know, um, where can you go and find free marketing information? 
So jump on and join us um, January 4th or June 14th at 2 p.m. And remember, we're always here to help you guys navigate through Epic, through Easy Links, through the carrier websites. We're here to help you guys with wh whatever you need. Just reach out to us, take a look at those as NOAA um, training YouTube channels. And everybody have a great day. And I want you all to know I am right on time. It is three o'clock. Usually I'm over and somebody's yelling at me for going over. So thanks very much for joining. And I appreciate all that you guys do for us.